All right, made this thing hot, so we got people getting on. Welcome, welcome. Gonna wait a few minutes, get our participants on. Joe's about ready to jump on. Jump into our meeting. Hope everybody is doing well today. July 15th, halfway through the month already. But once Joe gets on, we'll, we'll wait and, uh, and then we'll jump into our meeting. Got a packed meeting today. Going to interview Joe, talk a little bit about some successes and clues and things that he could share with us, especially when it comes to building wealth. And, uh, and then we'll do with our awards in the second half of our meeting today. We'll go here. Hey, Joe. You got to take it off mute. I got to hide. Okay, I'm good. Thank you. All right, awesome. All right, Sorry, we, got our, we got our participants showing up today. And uh, I got Krista here. She's written down two of the hardest questions you'll ever get in your life. And she's just going to wait to pull those out at some point. Okay, okay, I'm ready. And uh, thanks apologies. For, thanks for, yeah, thanks for joining us. Yep. Um, we got our participants jumping on. We're about to 50. So you're just going to be able to see us and they're going to watch in a webinar. Yep. But Joe, let's just jump into it. I believe success leaves clues. You've been a business partner of Andy and I for a while. Um, you've had great success in the real estate. You're still at it working a little bit. But for people that don't know you, go back and, 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 and tell us your story. Um, okay, thank you. Apologies for being a moment or too late. I was on the wrong, <laughs> the wrong Wait, call. Okay. Um, thank you, Chad. Thank you, Krista. Thank you, team. Um, my story. What do you What do you want to What do you want to know, Chad? Just start from the beginning. Tell us. Tell us. Tell us about uh, when Joe you showed up as an entrepreneur at some point in your life, and where did Where did that come from, and what did you get started with? What was the early days of business for you? Well, so I think at uh, 18 years of, I'll go back to 18 and I'll fast forward to 59. Um, but at, at 18 years old, I was in college uh, and didn't, and was running out of money after one semester. And I felt like college wasn't teaching me what I needed to know. So um, my dad was moving to Houston. I moved to Houston and um, I got into real estate. How did I get into real estate? I had a guy in that invited me into land sales. And I would actually set appointments for him to sell land in the middle of Magnolia, Texas. And what he forgot to tell me is that I needed my real estate license to do that. So I went and got my real estate license. I tried selling land for myself. I never sold a piece of land to anyone except myself, which I bought a piece of land at about 19 years old in the park place uh, mobile home subdivision. I sent you the video, Chad. You, you, should, uh -huh. you should send that right, to people. Yeah, yeah. In Park Place Mobile Home Subdivision, and I bought on Boardwalk, so I would have my first monopoly. Uh, and so, um, but I never sold to anyone else. And the reason when I'd ask uh, my peers why why they were, weren't telling them about the well and the septic system and everything else that they were going to have to pay for, they looked me in the eye and said they never asked. And so I got out of that business and I went to work for an apartment locating company who I was their top locator in the, um, in the company. And I was doing about 42 leases a month as a, as a youngster. And I told them that I wanted to, I wanted to go help them open other operations. And they told me I wasn't senior enough and they didn't recognize my talent. So I went and opened and opened my own company with someone that lent me seven thousand dollars, which turned into what what I what we where we are today. Okay, so I started with nothing. Um, it's a true success story. I call it Yankee made good because I moved here from New York. Right, so, right. Uh, I'm I'm Yankee made good. Um, I, I ran. I started my own apartment lo locating company, which evolved into uh, which is a one apartment locators. Um, and we've just actually closed that because the evolution from 82 till now is no one really needs someone to help them find an apartment when there's so many out there. And, and plus my people were senior and they were ready to, they were, they were much older. They weren't going and getting it anymore. Um, and from apartment locating, I actually got into real estate because the people that wanted apartments eventually wanted to rent houses and the people 
that wanted to rent houses eventually wanted to buy houses. So we started Rothschild Realty, then ERA Rothschild Realty, then Remax for 20 years, top guy in the world, three years in a row. And then also, and then Keller Williams in 2010. And um, so I joined Keller, I, 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 I'm a firm believer that why reinvent the wheel when you can buy the wheel? Um, that someone quoted me on that uh, my last meeting, but it's true. It's so much easier to buy a wheel than, than, than reinvent one for sure. So I look at Keller Williams as a wheel and it's the best training. I learned here more at Keller Williams in the first six months than I did at Remax in the, in the in 20 years that I was their top guy. Um, and the reasons I joined were everything, uh, really the main reason was the training was the best that I've ever seen in, in not just the country, the world. And then I love the fact that they profit shared with their team and it actually taught me something what I wasn't expecting, which is God or spiritual first, then family, then business. Because uh, I always had it the other way and it didn't work out well for me. But yeah. I'm here and I'm happy. So better late than never. Um, but it's, it's been amazing. And then uh, now we uh, have, you and I have um, two market centers together. I'm uh, proud and honored to be able to call you partner as well as Andy. Uh, as well as I know Yana is going to be our partner. Yana is our partner too now. Uh, I'm very excited for that. Um, sometimes in, in, this, uh, in this COVID world, we must make changes in order to evolve. And um, we have a title company with, which is called Celebrity Title with three locations, one in, uh, one in your market, in, in your building, uh, which is doing very well. Commercial properties, and then also a team still. So that's what I'm involved in, um, and I'm very go, I love what go, I do. It's a little history. Yeah, that's awesome. Recap. Let's go back to a little bit, because you said the top uh, number one guy in the REMAX uh, system for three years. That's not a small feat. And I believe, right, you were the top Houston team and agent for like 13 years with uh, Houston Business Journal, right, you. But go back to those years with REMAX when you were at the top and doing it and give us a little, what's some strategies or success stories that came out of that? Um, number one guy in the world three years in a row, but this isn't why I'm on the meeting. I'm, I'm in the meeting just to help others. I think that the key that I would love for everyone to take away from it is, yep. I, is I was raw talent and no one recognized my talent because if they did think of where they would be today. So who is that that you don't recognize and I love when people don't recognize talent because then I meet people like Andy and Chad and Krista and Yana uh, and, my, and some of my other leaders. So, you know, recognize talent and, and, um, and use things like the KPA and everything. I'm sorry, I'm going off tangent. Um, mm -hmm. it, I, was, I was producing about four or five, uh, I think it was about four million a year in gross commission income or better. And I was bringing about one to $1.4 million dollars net income, net operating income yearly for several years in a row. Yeah. So that's what you want yeah, to but I want, Yeah. But how do you build something like that? If you were to go back and to give us several steps that are really important that understanding, even if it's in the lead generating model, even if it's in uh, service, what would be some really fundamental strategies or steps you would share with us? Um, first of all, sorry. Um, Real estate's purely a numbers game. And when I say it's purely a numbers game, you know, um, I would, when I was in sales and uh, my dad did home improvements in New York when I was uh, in high school and I would first cold call and then I would go knock on doors. And I knew that if I knocked on a certain number of doors, I was going to get a certain number of leads. So mm -hmm. real estate, if you learn nothing else, is purely a numbers game. Um, and so... What I, would, what I did is when I started in real estate, I first replaced myself as, as answering the phone. I, I, I never found myself, you, you have to change it to today's standards, but I, I would never put myself doing $5 an hour work. What does that mean? I would never make a copy on the copying machine. I would never do my own laundry. I would never do that. I would bring it to a laundromat because I said, if I find myself doing $5 an hour work, then that means I'm being unproductive and I'm losing money because while I'm paying someone to do $5 an hour work, I can be doing $100 an hour work, just for example. 
So yeah. I always I always looked at life that way. And any time I actually found myself making a copy or answering phones, like first I replaced myself as a receptionist. And then eventually I had people uh, working with buyers. Then eventually I didn't process my own transactions because I could pay someone to do that. And I can make so much more doing something else because all we have is our, all we have to sell is our time. We only have so much in a given week, yeah. a given day, a given, a given uh, hour. So if you knock on enough doors and you make enough phone calls, that's going to lead to success. Yes. I talked to a gentleman today who's one of our top people here. Uh, his name is Dan. And I saw him in the hallway on the way up and he said he's already made his phone calls for the day. He's about to go knock on a hundred doors. He just got done uh, getting a referral from knocking on that hundred doors, which is just under 500,000. He said it sell for about 465. He's going to make about 15,000 this week alone from knocking on doors. Yeah. So you, you say often you have two slogans that I've heard you say, don't be a secret agent and knock loud enough. What do you mean by those two things? Um, it's funny. I had a meeting with my, uh, my sales team yesterday um, and they didn't have their name badges on all of them. You know, I've, I've coached or spoken to a lot of people over the years and I have people actually stop me at the Keller Williams conventions and say, I just want to tell you, thank you because you affected my business in a very positive way because people, that people were in a profession that people love to talk about real estate. They love to talk about buying and selling houses, flipping houses, whatever you want. So we're not selling life insurance that no one wants to talk about. So when you wear your badge, which is your badge of honor, whether it's a badge or a Keller Williams shirt or something, people are going to talk to you about real estate and believe it or not, it's going to improve your income drastically on an annual basis because whether you're in your bank or your grocery store or you don't know where you are, people are going to appreciate the fact that you are in real estate. And I've had people that just grabbed me because I had my, my identifier on and I've gotten more business at restaurants and at uh, grocery stores and at everything else than you can ever possibly believe but don't be that secret agent that people don't know because you're affecting your business and your family's income in a negative way by being a secret agent don't be a secret agent okay yep. and when i when i talk about knocking on doors and i talk about knocking hard um i used to be a door knocker i still don't mind door knocking and i used to be in some of the worst parts of new york knocking on doors and i would knock on doors and someone and i'd hear the people inside and they wouldn't answer okay your chances of success when people don't answer the door are zero. So I would go and I'd knock really hard and they come to the door really upset and I'd say, Oh, sorry, my bad. You know, but I just wanted to talk to you for a moment because even if they're coming to the door upset, Chad, even if they're coming to the door upset, at least I have a chance of being successful with them as opposed to, if they, if I don't knock hard, I have zero chance of success. So I always say knock real hard. So, um, and when you phone call, people are afraid to, uh, to call hard, but if you don't call hard, somebody else is going to, I'm the only guy that I know that has ever told the story that when I was pre-qualifying someone, when I was in the apartment locating business, they, I asked so many questions, they hung up and I called back and I said, I think we got disconnected. And he told that story to the leasing agent that leased him. He says he, he's so aggressive that he, I hung up on him and he called me back, but I laughed all the way to the bank, you know, because don't, don't be shy. If you're shy, somebody else right behind you is not going to be. Yeah. So what's your, what's your life look like today? Um, you've had to step back into the role and be a little bit more active. It's kind of like Gary Keller, right? He's had to step back into the role because of that. And so what's your, what's your world look like right now? Uh, let's see. I've got a wonderful uh, new team leader and operating principal at Keller Williams Signature. Thanks. And, and really, the only reason I have it is because you always need to be a talent magnet. That's my key to you today. You always need to be looking for new talent because someone that you're working with right now is not going to need to be replaced. So always be recruiting, always be looking for talent because when you need them, they'll be there. Um, that's how, and, and success leaves clues. Look at what Andy and Chad and, and uh, Krista and Yana have, have done, okay, at the market center in Southwest. 
and Norman, of course. Um, and if, if you look at that history of achieving your goals and goals are not optional, uh, then, you, then you know who should be in place and who's successful and who's a winner. Uh, because today you can have a million excuses why you can't succeed, or you can have the reasons that you're gonna succeed in spite of. When I first started doing real estate in Houston, Texas, it was called Foreclosure City back in the 80s. And the saying was, well, the last person to leave, please turn the lights out. And I got started in real estate, so that was a terrible, it, actually it was a great environment for me because I never knew any better. And, and if you can be successful in this COVID environment right now and keep being persistent and determined, which I'm a big believer in persistence and determination alone or omnipotent, meaning almighty capable of anything, meaning that you have no limits, the sky is the limit, or there are no limits. And fortunately God installed that in, in me, uh, instilled it in me, uh, the belief and the knowledge, but um, be recruiting and always looking for, the, for that next person. My life today, uh, is great because Signature is being run by amazing people as well as Southwest. And now I've taken over the title company as the president. We've had our most profitable month in June, I, I think this year. Uh, and it's only been 90 days since I took over and I'm looking for my replacement, uh, my team. I'm, re I'm replacing the leader there and I'm, I'm helping coach them. And then I'm building commercial properties. Um, and really having a lot of fun doing that too, building buildings. All right, let's go back to the vesting piece because there's, there's a mindset and an approach that you take. You shared a little bit about your first investment, but if I was to get in, into the investment game, what, uh, what advice would you give? Uh, take chances. Uh, my, first, my first property I bought was $21,000 for a two bedroom, two bath condo. I think I sold it for about 70 or 80. Mm -hmm. um, and then I bought a $42,500 house. Every time you go into a listing appointment or you talk to someone about selling their house, remember that not only are you talking to them about selling your house, you're the potential buyer. And my accountant who told me I was two, and, and, and my, my second property I ever bought ever, I cashed in my 401k, which had about $8,000 into it. My accountant told me not to do it because I was too heavily invested in real estate. Now he's my business partner in my commercial shopping centers. So once he saw my tax returns, but long story short, you have to take risks. I've lost millions of dollars, non-real estate related, taking risks on companies that I, didn't, I, I shouldn't have, but I've never lost money on real estate. And if you go in to a listing looking like you're either gonna list it or you're gonna buy it, that's, it gives you a whole different perspective. You know, you, I've walked in and, and bought houses from people if, if, because you're front line, you get to see those deals before anybody else. And you say, how much do you want? And they tell you, say, okay, I'll take it. What? I'll take it. We're good. You know, and that's the attitude I always went in with. And that's how, I, and, and, and what I explained to you on, the, on our last call is real estate is kind of like a live game of Monopoly. Um, you take those little houses and you eventually, t you know, you buy a lot of houses and then you eventually turn those into hotels. In my case, I just turned them into shopping centers instead. So it's, it's a, and eventually your passive income, your goal is for your passive income to pass up your ordinary income. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going out there and I'm going, I need a little bit of cash to start on this process. Um, how, how would you, what would you give advice to people to get started today to set aside the cash needed to start jumping into this game of real estate? Great question. You can have no more no better opportunity to generate cash than selling real estate. So when my team started making money, I would just take all that money. My, my first rental, uh, my, where I rented first, my first apartment cost me $250 a month. And I was eating barbecue sauce sandwiches because that's all I can afford to eat at the time. But I would take whatever extra I made and I would invest it in real estate. So whatever I made income wise in commissions, I would just invest in real estate. Commissions to real estate, commissions to real estate. And most people would go buy a car or, or their own house or something. Take your commissions, invest them in real estate, income producing real estate only, okay? And, and once you have enough income producing real estate, then go buy a car. Put off your personal gratification for all, then go buy a car, then go buy a nice house, but use the income from all these rental properties to buy, to buy your car. My, my son, who's, believe it or not, he's, uh, I think he's gonna be 29 this year. He already owns 10 rental properties. And you know, 
you know, he doesn't live, you know, he doesn't live in a multi-million dollar house or anything. He can probably live above his means, but he's already acquired a, a million dollars in net worth through his own efforts at 28 or 29. But he's doing the same thing. He's highly leveraged, but I'm just saying he's taking the money he's making in commissions and he's investing it in buying houses. So he's a little chip off the old block. That's exactly what I did. And I used the money. Eventually I sold my houses and bought shopping centers. Yeah. So your 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 car wasn't fancy in the beginning, what you said, what you're saying. It was an Oldsmobile 98 Regency with tinted windows, two door. Okay. Look like a little uh, uh, a little gangster. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> now today you could drive the Mercedes. I bought it with my income producing properties. Yep. Yep. All right. Very good. Ca cash, of course. All right. If anybody's on and you want to put in some questions you'd like to, don't feel free to uh, make it in the in the chat box right there. Be sure to ask Joe. Krista, you got a question or two you'd like to ask? I do. So, um, Joe, what is your motivation that keeps you going nowadays? I mean, things are getting rough. We're, we're in a pandemic. And even before then, you know, uh, you're having to change roles a little bit. What keeps you going? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer that when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Okay. I, I like a good challenge. It's, a, it's the spice of life. Um, and so, but um, honestly, my first motivation was when I was 18. Uh, Krista were 19, I realized that my parents would grow up without a, um, without any assets. I saw that they weren't working towards acquiring assets and I was a real bad kid. But at that point I straightened up and started working to, um, generate enough income to make sure to be able to take care of my mom and dad when they get older and my family that I, that I didn't yet have. And now I'm fortunate enough to, uh, say, God bless, because I actually take 100% care of my mom, who's got dementia, and she's not in great shape right now. Uh, Full-time caretakers, 24-7, her own apartment, not a nursing home. Um, and then also my dad, who I just had dinner with, who's 93. Uh, so I get the pleasure of taking care of all of them. Still help my uh, kids and uh, help them accomplish their goals. And uh, I'd say my, my main motivator is my family. And then also, I, I love a good challenge. I love being successful, and I don't like being second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that. All right, here's a question that came in from Sarah. Do you think new neighborhoods are good for income producing properties and appreciation? And how about in this market? So you know a lot about new construction. So give us your thoughts on that and in, in investment and appreciation. Yeah, new neighborhoods are, uh, are they've got pros and cons. Um, you're going to wind up paying way more for a new house than an old house, but they're better insulated. They're less, less warranty issues, but you're going to competing, be competing with new home construction for probably years, if not decades or, you know, and so your, your values won't go up at as fast. Um, I would never spend four or $500,000 on an income producing uh, home because I think that it can get damaged too much. Um, by one person, I would, I would rather see someone buy $350,000 houses, for example. Okay. Because it's kind of like a shopping center. Do you want one big tenant like CVS or, or Walgreens? Okay. Or Best Buy where when they go out of business, you're a hundred percent vacant mm. or would you rather, if you spent 450,000 on one house or bought $350,000 houses, one guy skips out in one of the 150s and you still got two guys paying you rent. So you're still 66 point, you're still 66.6% .6 occupied. Mm -hmm. So I'd buy, I would not go new homes. I'd go resale. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, and this is new construction. If it's 250 or less was the comment, I but you that. have, but you have bought new construction before, but you got on in the pre-sales where they needed to be get in early. I got in the pre-sales and I sold them quickly uh, and I didn't make any money on those. That's the one time I didn't make uh, dollars in, re in real estate because I was competing with new home construction and yeah. I didn't want, and, and uh, I think you own one of those too, Chad, but you know, yeah. um, but long story short, and I saw the 250 note, I think 250 is a decent number. Uh, if it's in an area like Aliana or, you know, one of those master plan communities, but, Again, how long does the builder have left in there? 
you know, what if, if the market gets tougher, are they going to start price slashing because they will then be your competition. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd sooner see it in a, uh, and also your property taxes in a new home neighborhood are a lot higher. Okay. Yeah. Pay attention to the property taxes and the HOA fee because they can kill you. They can kill your income. Yeah. Typical property taxes in the neighborhood are about 4% in a new neighborhood, close to four. And in older neighborhoods, because the mud tax is paid down, it's going to be closer to 3%. Yeah. HOA fees in a new neighborhood could be $500 to $1,000. In an old neighborhood, it could be two fifty. Yeah. You know, so just keep taxes and HOA fees and insurance are really critical. And I would not buy it. I, I would discourage the new home neighborhood. I'd go buy resale. Okay. All right. Very that's good. No, that's good feedback. Makes sense. Krista, another question? Yeah. So if somebody is considering getting into investing right now in a pandemic, what would you recommend to them if they've not done it before? Well, I, I'm not sure that I'd, I, I'd be working on building up my commissions and I'd be, will, I'd be building up my cash reserves because I think we're going to have a hiccup in the market. And I think that right now that the government has forestalled that just a little bit, but I think you're going to see foreclosures increase. And I think you're going to see a, a, a dip in the market because uh, the only reason prices are so high is interest rates are so low and the market is propped up by the government putting trillions of dollars into it. And I, right now, what I'm doing personally is sitting on a lot of cash, just waiting for a dip. That's mm -hmm. exactly what I do. Yep. All right. Get your, get your cash ready. Yep. Hold on to it. Krista, any other question? Um, just for, you know, first time investors, how much uh, cash would you put down on your first investment home? As little as possible. I believe that you put as little as possible and then, and then keep whatever extra cash you have. Uh, for a rainy day because there will be that day where someone moves out and completely trashes your house and you have to recarpet and repaint and you're going to say, whoa, I'm never going to do this again. But those are the times you dig deep and just fix it up and make it look pretty. And then when you, uh, you're going to have some tenants to stay there and pay off your home mortgage for all 15 years. I don't encourage people to go 30 year mortgages. I encourage them to go 15. For example, Krista, how old are your children? Your youngest? Yeah. My youngest is 11 weeks. Okay, so if you, congratulations, by the way. Um, and, the, and the name? Uh, Grayson. Oh, beautiful. So if you bought a house right now, okay, and you put it on a 15-year note, and you have someone else paying off your house, okay, and it covers your debt service, in 15 years, you'll have a two, three, maybe even $400,000 house paid off that somebody else paid off, except for your initial down payment, a little bit of lipstick once in a while, paint and carpet, and you'll have a two or three or four hundred thousand dollar asset in fifteen years if you put it on a fifteen year note. There's college money. Yeah. Yep. Wow. So uh, the question is, how are you? One question was asked: How do you find investment properties under price? HAR properties go fast. That's why Joe said, "I'll answer that one." Is hold on to your cash right now. We're not seeing the deals. They're going to come, and go find distressed properties, go in there going, either I'm going to list it or I'm going to buy it from you. That was what Gary Keller said. He goes, I can't believe I have to get in business with Keller Offers and have a system. I don't understand why you guys are just not the Keller Offers. You go be the open door and all that and do it yourself. Uh, how, how do you find them is you go knock on doors. Okay? Yeah. So, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in, uh, uh, in talking to you about if you're interested in selling your home and they say, well, I, are you a realtor? Yes, I am a realtor and I'm proud of it. I'm also a buyer and I'm looking to buy right now. Are you interested in selling? They say, oh, you're a buyer. Okay. Uh, so that's one way. The other thing is tell the agents in your office that work with you that you're a buyer if they come across any good deals because the best deals are before they ever hit the market. Yeah. So yep. let everyone in the marketplace know that you're a buyer uh, in, our, in our market centers and also um, go knock on doors. And, 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 and go get listings because listings are opportunities. If you get a listing, you're going to make four or five, ten thousand $10,000, maybe 15000 one time. If you buy that house, you're going to make so much more. So would you do would, in the beginning, would you use a property management company? Nope. Um, no, Nope. Tell us why. Because I like to manage my own money. Okay. No one else gets my checks. I get my checks and I'm happy when I get them. Okay. okay. And they're not going to send me my money once a quarter, once a month. I mean, when you get an outside third party managing your properties, then you've given up control of your properties to somebody else. Okay. And I want complete control of my, of my future and my destiny. 
So no, I wouldn't. So who's answering that phone call at uh, 10 o'clock, the, the AC broke? It used to be me, and now I have full-time property managers that do it. Okay, all right, yeah. very good. If I, get a, if I get a break in or anything else, I still show up. Would you be break. afraid of, the question was on a flooded home, Houston, we have a lot of flooding, Harvey in particular. Would you be afraid to invest in, in a property that was flooded? First of all, there's nothing in the world that I'm afraid of. I don't like snakes and alligators uh, and sharks. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not afraid of them. I just want to see them before they, before they attack me. I'd rather fight a bear because at least I could see him first. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not afraid of anything. Although if a bear did come at me, I would probably run. Uh, <laughs> or climb a tree. Uh, flooded houses, sorry, I'm going off tangent. Yeah. Uh, flooded houses, I wouldn't be afraid of at all because it was a once in 500 year flood. I would not be afraid of them. And eventually what happens is everyone forgets time heals and the property will be worth just as much or more than it was before. Yeah. Okay. Last question. MREA book. You're quoted in this book, right? I am. And uh, you were in there and you were at Remax at the time when you're talking about a millionaire real estate agent. And yet if you have your copy of the book, it's all marked up and you're all in it. Tell us about, tell us about that book and why you study it. Well, uh, the systems and models that are in that book still work today. Yeah. And uh, what's, what's amazing about that book is when they interviewed me, they were a competitor. Keller Williams showed me more recognition as my competitor then Remax did as their top guy in the world. And what's really interesting, I'll tell you another fact, is that when I went to the Keller Williams Convention and spoke after they published me in the book, not one person tried to recruit me in the whole Keller Williams Convention. So don't think that people aren't approachable because I wasn't ever approached by a Keller Williams agent. And, I, and, and yet um, Gary Keller, actually it wasn't Gary Keller, it was Jay Papazon called me and interviewed me showed me more recognition in that book than, than anyone at Remax did in the 20 years I was their top guy. Um, the systems and models work. It's, uh, what we're doing in real estate today is no different than what, what was happening in real estate 10, 20, 50, 100 years ago. The door knocking is still critical. The personal relationships are still critical. Uh, the keeping in touch with people is still critical. Nothing has changed and the models, most people will talk about how much gross commission they made, uh, and I believe that's flawed. Our, our whole system should be focused on net income, not gross income. And I really think that if people, most realtors are not business people. They're realtors and they make commission. They, if you ask them what their gross commission is, they might know. And if you ask them what their net income is, 95 or more percent of them will not know. Run this like a business. That's what MREA teaches you. Okay, that's what, that's what that book teaches you. That's what uh, I would teach. Run this like a business. Keep your financials as your business Bible. Know what your net income is. Know what your gross income is, but know what your net is. Focus on your net because if you focus on your net, anything you focus on grows, and that's what you really need to focus on. Run it like a true business. Know your numbers all the time, and that's one of the critical things that that book teaches. Awesome. All right, we got about 95 people on this call. What's the one thing you want to leave them with you want to make sure that they heard? Never be a secret agent. Stay super persistent, determined. Don't ever give up, okay? Focus on your net numbers, okay? And look at everything as an opportunity, even in a down environment, because that's when, that's when your competition is giving up and that's when you will excel. Awesome. All right. Appreciate it. That was great knowledge. Good information as well. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, Chad. Thank you, Krista. Have a great day. And All right. Rob, you too. Thank you, every, thank you, everyone, for having me. It's my honor. Yes, it was awesome. Good stuff. All right, Krista, let's jump into our awards and, and move away. You Should ready? Numbers before awards? Yeah, yeah. Do that. That'd be great. Perfect. Let me open this up here. So I'd like to share my screen with everybody. Can you see that, Chad? I can see it, yes. All right. So here we have our lore or language of real estate report on how our office did compared to the market. Keep in mind, all these numbers are pulled off of HAR. So sometimes there's more production that's not on HAR that's not included in these reports. So um, 
We had more listings taken in the month of June. This is compared to uh, the prior year. Our listings taken went up 7.4%, but Fort Bend actually went down compared to last year at the same time. Listing contracts written, we uh, went up 30% um, compared to last month and the market in HAR only went up 16.4%. So that's almost double the growth from last month to this month. So that's exciting. Uh, more listings sold. We sold 114% um, more listings this month compared to last month. Um, HAR only increased 18.9%. Um, so, you know, that's a really fun story to tell um, when you're sharing this with your potential sellers. And then more total closings. We also saw our buyer sales increase by a huge amount from last month to this month, right? And so we increased 116%, the local market by 47%. Now you might, you might ask yourself, well, isn't that because we were in a pandemic and things were closed down and everything like that? Well, yes, but so was the rest of the market. Awesome. Right? Yeah. Good information. Um, so I want to share that. I will yeah. be posting these on my KW Connect page today. So if you'd like to download these PowerPoint slides, they're editable. You could put your logo on them. Um, you just let people know that this is your office's numbers. This is why they need to list with you because we are outpacing the market. All right. Tell them one more time. How do they find it? Okay. So um, the easy way is if you just email me and I'll send you a link to click, right? Uh, if you want to find it on your own, go to KW Connect. You can get there by My KW and you click on the Education tab. Once you're in KW Connect, you want to search for my name, Krista Ailes. Click on it and then you want to go to Follow Me. Um, you can also look at all of my previous uploads to see anything that's been uploaded in prior months that you might want to use or edit. Um, most of it's going to be very similar to this. I update it every single month and uh, so you can have um, current numbers. What's your email they want to know? KLRW25 at KW.com. Okay. All right. All right, I put that in the email address. Okay, good information. Got some great activity going on. Our office is doing well in production. Now let's go into your switch gears to awards. Oh, yeah, um, more. Let me share this one last one. So yeah. this is another slide that I will upload. Um, it's a one page summary. Oh, I got to update the date here, but it's a one page summary that shows all of the metrics that we just went over, how we outpace the market in listings taken uh, units, listing contracts, listing sold and total closings. This is an area for you to update your personal information, your picture, your name, your email address. You brand it to yourself because here at Keller Williams, we believe that it's big agent, little KW. So we're here to support you and your numbers and you can use this flyer at an open house. You could use it while door knocking, anywhere you need a one page um, summary sheet that you can grab some eyeballs and attention and start to explain to them why they need to do business with you. All right. Awesome. I hope you guys take advantage of it. That's great stuff. Post yeah. it, share it, listing appointments, use the numbers. Unless your numbers are better, then use your own. That's right. And okay. the great thing about these slides is they're editable, so you could edit them with your own numbers. Yep. Awesome. Okay. All right. All right. We're going to do a little bit different with the awards. Since the COVID and our different format, we've fallen off a little bit. And so we just want to recognize some people in our office that are having a strong first month, six months. We're going to promote these and send these out as well to focus on people that are doing well and celebrate you along the way. Yeah, I'd like to start, Chad, with recognizing our cappers from last month. Awesome. We had eight cappers in the month of June. Um, the Baker team, led by Todd Baker, they capped in the month of June. Oops, let me go back here. Sorry. Let's start at the beginning, shall we? Uh, Nimesh Dave, captain. Nimesh. First time capper. Woohoo! Nimesh. Super excited. This My joke with him is what took you so long? He gets that. <laughs> awesome job. He's doing very yep. well. And he's just rocking and rolling. He's bringing on new listings, you know, uh, consistently. And so I'm just really excited to see where his business is going. We really appreciate you, Nimesh, and everything that you've been doing, um, helping with the technology and helping train all of our agents. You are really appreciated. So awesome. good. 
Um, also capped in the month of June, Kevin Talbot. Way to go, so Kevin. Uh, Kevin, now you can get those 100% checks, which we all love. Kelly Jackson from the KJAX group, also hey, capped in the month of June. Kelly Farmer, also right. capped. Kelly, good job. Eden T. Eden, solid every year. Good job. Consistently. Joanna Grenader, she used to be on a team and recently branched out on her own. And within a couple of months, here she is capping. So we're going to see some great things from her. Good job, awesome. Joanna. That's awesome. And then Jamie Castens also Jamie. capped. Uh, she capped faster this year than she did last year. She's just rocking and rolling. And then we had Todd here. And then moving on from our cappers, we had our um, year-to-date awards. So the way we did this, um, because we we did not take uh, all of the months in between when we shut down and coming back, so we wanted to recognize everybody year-to-date. Um, so for listing units individual, we have in first place Robbie Jansky with 28 units listed year-to-date. Awesome. Yeah, that's insane. Robbie. So that's like, uh, what, over four months? That's really awesome. And then in second place, we have Jamie Cassins. That's why she's capping faster. She's getting those listings. She yep. had 18 year to date. Angie Farish with 17. Awesome. Last yeah, week, Angie. He had 12. And then wow. Elaine and Nazneen both listed 10. So we're super excited to be in business with all of them. And Good job, Elaine. Good, Good job, Nazneen. Awesome. And then with our teams, oops, we got listing uh, volume. For our individuals. Yep. So for volume, Jamie uh, came out on first with 6.2 million in listed volume. Robbie Yansky was 5.6 million. Then Elaine with 5.5. Not too far off of Robbie. She's giving you a run for your money there. Job, and then Nazneen had uh, 4.7 million in listed volume and Angie had 3.6 million. Awesome. Solid. So Good job, group. These are some very solid numbers. You consider this is only six months. So this has the potential to double, if not more, for the rest of the year. Great. All right. And then our closed units, um, individual here. First place was Jamie Castens. She's had 26 closed units year wow. to date. Awesome. Joyce Castillo, she had 25. Ooh, Joyce, you missed it by one, girl. Mm. Come on, you got six months to catch up. Here we go. And then Robbie Yansky, he closed 20 units. Awesome. Sahar, she closed 19. And then Angela McDaniel and Susan Garzinski both closed 17 units. 17 year to date. That's awesome. That means you yeah, need 34 by the end. Or one of you needs to do 35 so that <laughs> uh, one of you win. Awesome. That's right. That's right. These are individuals, remember, right? First part, yeah. individuals. Yeah. These are all individuals. We haven't even gotten to the teams and groups yeah. yet. So for close volume, first place was Sahar with 4.985 million, awesome. right? I had to go to the 8.5 because in second place with 4.965. Oh, wow. Castillo, the ooh girl, you just barely missed it again. Come on, we just need one more. And then here in uh, third place, we got Mike Wong with 4.5 million. Good Jamie job, with 4.4 4 million. And then uh, Jay David with 3.8, Justin Duffield. So. J. David Property Sales Team. Look at that. Yep. That's a mouthful. Good That's job, right. Justin. That's right. Awesome. Okay. And then we have our teams. Um, we are going to put together a nice little slide with some team logos on here for today. I got the names of the teams. So for top listing units, we have the Diaz team that listed 25 units. The Marta Mohan team listed 16 and the Burgess group, which listed 10. Good here job. So great job to our teams. Listing volume, we had uh, the Marta Mohan team in first with 8.4 million. We had the Diaz team with 7.9 million. Uh, the Home Coach group, which is C.W. Ross and his wife, Anne, 2.4 million, uh, 2.456. They just beat, beat out Guevara Backman, Liz Guevara, by, she was at 2.453. So we're looking at $3,000 difference here. <laughs> so, uh, you know, they're very, very close, but the home coach group did come out ahead. And um, then we had in fifth place, the Flores team with just over 2 million. So great job to all of our teams and their listing. 
And then for our closed units for our teams, we had the Diaz team with 61 closed units. We had Gavar Backman with 25, tied with the Marta Mohan team for 25. Good job. A lot of units. Yes. And then for closed volume, we had uh, the Diaz team with 7.4 million in closed volume, the Marta Mohan team with 6 million, Gavara Backman with 3.5 million, the Day team, Mike and Linda Day with 2.3 million, and the Flores team, Tara and Israel with 1.9 million. Great. Good job, group. All right. Now here's, uh, here's uh, some very exciting numbers from our top groups. Um, and we have some really strong groups here. I don't know if everyone realizes, but we have some very strong players um, on the individual team and especially on the group side. Um, listing unit, our top team year to date, six months, has listed 79 units. Mm. That's a lot. Yep. Awesome yeah. job, Audra and group. Audra and her team, they've been rocking and rolling. And I even emailed them to confirm this number. I thought, no way, maybe I messed up on this number. Nope, they have been kicking you know what. So great job to the Audra O'Neill team. I know that's a team effort and um, they're gonna do some amazing things this year. Um, second place group was the Kathy Stubbs team with 38 listings. Uh, third place was the SIA group with 32. Uh, fourth place was the Butch Watterson team with 24 and then Kimbra V team in fifth place with 23 year to date. Okay, awesome, good job group. Now with the units comes the volume, right? Volume follows the units. Uh, top group, the Audra O'Neill team with $35 million uh -oh. volume. That's half a year, remember, half a year. That's right, that's yeah. right. So what happens if half of that closes? Yeah, there's more than half will close. close all of it, let's go. Yeah, let's go, let's go for 100%, right? Yep. Uh, Kathy Stubbs team is in second with 19.2 million enlisted volume. Awesome. Amazing number, these are really great numbers. SIA group, 8.8 .8 million in listed volume. The B&P team, Imran and Pinky, with 8.3 million in listing volume. Good job. And the Butch Watterson team in fifth place with $7.7 .7 million in listed awesome. volume. Congratulations, good work. And then our closed units, uh, Audra O'Neill team, she has, um, sorry, I've lost my space, 74 closed units. Wow. Now, can we back up and remember how many she listed? 79. 79. 79. Yeah. She's closed 74 year to date. Good job. So I'm sure there's some buyers in there, so I'm sure more of those listings are going to be closing. That's, these are great numbers. Um, second place in closed units was a tie between the BNP team and the Kathy Stubbs team at 49 closed units. Awesome. On track for 100 closings this year. Good job. That's right. And the SIA group was uh, just below that at 45. And the investor group with David and Diana Barnett is at 34. Awesome. Now for our closed volume, Audra O'Neill, she's closed 21 million so far this year. The Ooh. Kathy Stubbs team, 16.7 million. The BNP team, 12.9 million in closed Good volume. Job. And then in fourth job. place, here, we've got Mona Knows Homes team, Mona Parikh, 6.7 million in closed volume. Great job, Mona. Good job, Next team. Place, we have the Kimber V team at 5.6 million. Awesome. And that is all the awards that we have to share. These are some great numbers. We're, Chad, we're in uh, business with some really awesome people, and I really Absolutely. appreciate everything they're doing. I know they're working so hard. So I'm proud of the group. Here's a theme that we see, not just at our market center, but across the country. The, and Joe said this in his meeting, right? The top people are getting after it, right? And when they do get after it, um, success shows up. Yes, the amount of sales in our area is going down, but the top people are reaching out and go getting it. So huge opportunity for market share and opportunity. I hope that you recognize that and congratulations to our teams. We'll also post them on our social media so you have an opportunity to blast it. That's why we specifically didn't put the numbers in there. So it's something that can be shareable and used, but we certainly want to recognize our top people as well. We got a lot of rising stars. Uh, we got new cappers in there. Congratulations to you as well. But I hope you hear on an overall theme is the opportunity is now go get it. Go get your unfair share. Yes, do we need more listings? Absolutely. 
uh, and yet most of those people on awards, you've already heard from them on a panel and focusing on Zoom calls. So you kind of know what they're already doing. They're getting up and going to work. So that's something that we really want to focus on and make sure that we move as well. Okay. Any other things we missed with announcement or awards, Krista, before I uh, switch gears? Unless you want to mention the uh, bold pivot that's starting again in oh, yeah. August. August yeah. work. Yeah. So if you had an opportunity to take bold pivot, you know what great value it brings. Um, if you haven't had an opportunity, now's your chance. Uh, some of those that have taken it, they'll probably be jumping back in as well. Um, it's still $99 starting August 4th. Registration is open right now. And um, they will very soon be opening registration for Mega Camp, which has moved to September. So be watching for that. I'm on a list to get updates. You can get on that list too if you go searching for it, put your name in, and you'll get the update as soon as the registration is live. Okay, awesome. Great opportunity there. Digital. Yeah, digital, including Mega, Mega Agent Camp, will be digital as well. And that's going to be pushed to September instead of August. But that'll be a great resource for you to well. You don't you can go. I heard some people said they're gonna go ahead and travel to Austin and just watch it virtually there just to give a change of pace. Uh, though that was multiple people that shared that well, with Well, I, I can tell you as as a household with young children, I can see the advantage to that. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. And uh, for those of you that have always said I've always wanted to go, I've never gotten the opportunity, I just couldn't get away. Now's your chance. Don't let this pass you by. Yeah, it'll be a great spot. All right, I'm gonna switch over to Kamal. Kamal is, serves on our ALC. And one of the things that came up as a topic, uh, as you know, with Gary Keller, is what we're, we're calling a, a social inequality kind of task force. Now we're still working on the name locally, but Keller Williams is doing that international. Our region is bringing it and we're bringing it to our local market center. And that's just really to dig in and, and to see where are opportunities to grow, to create the, the space and awareness. So uh, Kamal, kind of tell me where we are in our initial conversations. Yeah, so thank you, Chad, so much for putting me. Um, I'm, I'm honored to serve alongside Tara and Kelly in, in this group and push it forward. Um, just to kind of update the market, where we're at is everybody knows what's going on right now. Um, when it comes to racial inequality in America. Um, we realize there's so much to do in real estate and we want to put our foot forward. Obviously we follow Gary Keller as our um, amazing and phenomenal leader. And um, we had to talk personally and we wanna take this step, the initiative of putting together a group and getting the market center involved. And this isn't just about one race. This is about being equal with everybody. Yes, there is a major thing going on with a specific race right now. And that's what needs to be talked about now. However, we live in Sugarland, we live in the Houston area and there's a lot of different races. And unfortunately, everybody's been profiled. At one point, it still happens in real estate. And we want to put forth an uh, effort and just make sure that we are in the forefront of ending that or doing everything we can to suppress it because that's not who we are. That's not culture. And quite frankly, it's, it's not being a human either. Um, and, and we got a lot of work to do. So if I want to, if I'm an agent, I want to get involved. Where's my opportunity? Uh, so I have my calendar right here. We will be meeting on the 30th, Thursday, the 30th at three o'clock. Um, I invite everybody to join us on the Zoom call. Uh, we're going to talk about a multitude of things. Um, our panel consists of uh, me that comes from a Middle Eastern background, uh, Tara, who is married to a Hispanic man that has seen that side, Kelly, who is African-American, that uh, her and Keith, thank you to them, um, are on the forefront of having those conversations with the market center. And, um, and I invite everybody of every race to come by, get involved. We're gonna come up with a, a lot of things to help us be, when we're in the field, when we get those questions, because let's face it, we all got it. The, the question of who lives in this neighborhood, right? Or who are the children that go to this school? What race do they belong? Or what race is this person that's applying to um, get the lease to my house? It, it comes up. 
And we want to talk about that. And we want to come up with strategies and ways that everybody gets an equal opportunity. Yep. All right. Very good. So your next time. So the next two team meetings, you'll hear from Kelly Jackson and from Tara Flores inviting you along uh, for that July 30th at three o'clock. Obviously, you'll get a Zoom link. And so how you can be involved in there. And I, I guess our objective is we're articulating this a little bit. So when I say I guess it, our objective is one is to bring awareness. Right. And not just bring awareness to make change in educating our agents right? So we can serve them at the best manner, right? In eliminating social inequality. And sometimes we need to create the space to have the conversation. Oh, and another thing is we have a law that's called fair house housing. And I do believe uh, that's violated often and sometimes unintentionally when we really think about it. And it makes us Absolutely. nervous as a liability. And so that's Absolutely. where we're going to start with this conversation, looking at education, creating panels, understanding cultural and racial differences and how to react to them and just creating the space moving forward. So join us Absolutely. if you're interested, July 30th, three o'clock, be looking for the Zoom link in our group. So thank you to our ALC led by Kelly Jackson, Tara Flores, and obviously Kamal, he jumped on. So thank you. I want to add one last thing, Chad. If, if The number one goal is to bring awareness. And if you feel like it's not a problem, then I feel like you are the forefront on making sure to be there. Yeah. Um, it happens and, and it should be talked about. So thank you so much, Chad. I appreciate well, it. Thank you, Kamal. Appreciate your leadership. All right. Thank you. We're down to one celebrity guest, right? Celebrity title. Dale's out of town, so he didn't send his replacement. So it looks like you get the show. I get the show. I'm always happy to take on the show. If you guys know anything, you know that about me. <laughs> I've never met a stranger, that's for sure. Um, just wanted to go through a couple of things. Since Dale wasn't on, I was kind of expecting him to talk to you guys about this because there was actually a change um, that um, Freddie May and Fran Fanny, excuse me, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, I got it right, um, have extended a couple of things. So if you guys ever deal with them, then just to know that they've extended the remote online notarization and remote ink notarization. I've actually put together a flyer for you. I was kind of expecting him to talk about that because that's something that's pretty um, more up his road. But for us, it's important for power of attorney. And when we're doing notarizations for power of attorney, for him, it's more about the mortgage side and everything that goes with that. But I do have a nice little flyer for you guys that I'm about to put on your Facebook page. And it indicates the technology vendors that are um, authorized to do remote online notarization. And we don't support all those vendors, but I'm giving you guys every information. So if you're not using Celebrity Tide, I wish you were, first and foremost. But if you're not, I'm going to give you everyone that's authorized to make those um, make those notarizations for you. So that way you guys are in, in, you know what's going on and what vendors you can work with and what vendors you can't. Um, in addition to that, I've given you a sample of the old rules versus the new rules and the extensions of the new rules so that you're fully aware of what you're talking about when you're dealing with your clients. I want to make sure that you're educated on power of attorneys, which ones are valid, which ones they'll accept, and how that's going to work. So um, it doesn't necessarily, it's not necessarily only title that it affects. It really does affect the mortgage side of your business, but I'd rather give you guys the information so you have it. And all those changes, um, once again, were extended on July 14th, so just yesterday. Um, in addition to that, Celebrity Title is launching a program which is called Ready to Close. It's exciting. Ready to Close is an opportunity for you to have a multi-factor authentication where you have access to your documents. So we're allowing you to see what we see versus us pushing it out to you. We'll give that to the buyer, the seller, the buyer's representation, the seller representation, and the loan officer. So everybody will be able to go into the file and see where the docs are what's been ordered, what hasn't been ordered. You do have to um, set up a security settings, um, go through a little bit of a process with that. But once that happens, you'll be able to go in and actually pull the files. And what that's going to allow you as realtors to do is when your buyer says, I swear I sent that to <laughs> sent that to title two weeks ago, and I don't know why it's not in my file. You'll actually be able to go in and see 
And the other thing that it'll allow you to do is if you have multiple files with celebrity title, you'll have it listed, kind of similar to like your DocuSign list where you can go see your different files and what you've sent out, you'll have access to all of that. So it's gonna alleviate a lot of stress for the realtors involved, hopefully the lenders involved, because everybody will be knowing what's going on and you'll have, you'll be able to control that. So instead of waiting for us to control it, you're back into control. So those are two things that I have awesome. going on. Um, excited about happy hour my first one so i look forward to seeing everybody at happy hour and i'll have my cocktail that's for sure uh, I mean, i'll be waiting all week for that one chad <laughs> so if you didn't catch that we got a virtual happy hour this friday starting at five o'clock have yes. some games and some prizes to give away yes. so join us there get get on your uh get at your house your patio whatever it is and get your drinking in come join us we had a lot of fun the last time we did that as well Yes. Um, also, if you are uh, a newer agent to join our company in the last year, Keith Jackson is set aside for the leadership team every Friday at four o'clock. We're just doing a Q and A with our leadership team and group, and we're going to be there just to unplug. So if you're wondering, hey, I didn't think I could approach Keith, Chad, or somebody oh. in the office, this gives you an opportunity to dig in, bring your questions. There is no really structure to it except our you have an availability. So every Friday from four to five, put that on uh, your calendar. He's going to be leading us up on the first. He led the last one and the second one. I'll jump on. Crystal, jump on just to give you guys an opportunity to, to ask us questions and we can give you some insight as well. And yet we're happy to be business. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hope you got a huge wealth from, from Joe. Don't forget commissions are paid through command right? Green sheets have gone away. If you need help with that, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Anyone on the leadership team can point you in the right direction. Oh, by the way, we're going to be making that change in compliance. It's going to be at the end of August and September. So let's get the commission figured out and then we'll walk you through the process to be able to be able to do compliance through command as well. But go crush it in the second half. There's a huge opportunity out there. If there's ever a way that I can be a resource, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us as well. Um, we're here to help. Let's go grow and make things happen. Yep. Thank you, Thanks, Chad. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys.